Okay, uh, this is a f the second of the techniques that I'm going to cover here. It follows on directly from the one we covered last time, which was um, side control, defense, things from that. Um, and it is basically a way of attacking from that position as well. So first I'm just going to show it off, and then we'll run into the mechanics of it. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to start underneath the side control position across here. I am going to control, sorry. I'm going to control this arm here. I'm going to pressure it forward as we did before. My hand is going to change. I'm going to thread, thread to here, and then I'm going to turn out and either finish or sweep with a Kimura style lock using this arm. Again, now, for anyone who's watching, you probably sound a little, seem a little bit skeptical about that, but it really isn't as complicated as I just made it look. So, what we're going to start off with. So, again, we're starting in the side control position. Again, also, as before, I can go both directions from here. I can start the way I did last time, or I can change through here and pass everything to the other side. It's the same thing. So, if I'm here, I push this in front of here and I establish this position across here. So, just circle around. I'm here and here. So, I have this control here. What I'm now going to have to do, I need to now thread this foot here behind this elbow here. To do that right now, this grip is quite strong, but it's not enough to really manipulate with. It's good for pushing with, but I can't thread or move it around. So my hand will either go from this kind of grip to a V-grip here, which allows you to manipulate things much more and make it much easier to work through from there. Or I can hold the cloth here, which does the same thing to here and here. This is probably slightly more versatile, but both ways work. Okay? So, we establish this position across here. Well, this foot comes over into the crease of the elbow. This gives me a bit of control over it, allows me to keep it open from here, as opposed to if it, I'm not trying to go back for it and look for it back here. I'm bringing it forward. I'm exposing the face of the elbow here, and I'm putting my heel directly in there. That's my pivot point. This now pushes out, and I thread this through to here. Okay? Now that I have this, one, if I stay on this side here, it's quite, it's relatively easy for him to straighten it out and bring it out. So once I have that position across there, here, yeah, I'm now going to start moving myself back to this way, which will bring his shoulder down and raise his elbow up. Okay, so I have this position, I will start moving to this side here. Okay, now that I have this, I'm, I'm not, you can lock your legs up and do complicated things from here, but the main aim here is now I use this foot here to translate my hips out, which again moves this a little bit higher, and then I'm going to start extending and turning in this direction here. This may just straight up tap him if I have enough control. If I have enough control to stop the roll, I can just finish here. Generally, at a decent competitive level, once I start doing this, they will roll from the top, and I'll have to follow to the top position here. Note, my leg is still hooked in the whole way through this. So now, if I want to finish from here, I'm going to have to bring his shoulders off the ground, the same way you would with a Kimura or anything else. I mean, I can just abandon this and take top position, which is fine. You know, take my top position. I don't get any sweet points, but I take, you know, I have the position benefit. Or if I want to go from here, I'm now going to step up my other leg, and I'm going to start extending and lifting his shoulder off the ground here. Once it starts coming up, I push my foot through, that may happen straight away there. If not, I can reach behind with my hand here, start pulling this up, and finish from there. So, again. So again, we arrive starting position. Well, again, pop the head up, hand here, pop, pop, pop. Well, here. Okay, this is now threaded through. Everything is now relatively simple from there. I can turn my side here. I start extending. So if he rolls, he rolls. I control. I step up. I push this through. I might just finish from there. Or again, if I bring shoulders the whole way off the ground, I can reach through, grab, and pull up for a finish from there. So that's the ideal situation from there. But most of the time what's going to happen is the person is going to see it coming, they're going to start defending their arm. So you need to get a bit more leverage to break it out from there, same as you would with the Kimura or anything else. So we're going to quickly look at how to do that. So again, same sort of start. Uh, yeah, so again, we get through in the same position, we start off, well, and we get to here. Now, nah. yeah, so keep circling around. Yeah, so I've, I've arrived across here. 
He, generally, he won't be able to tuck his hand, but he will be able to do what he just did there, which is step his knee over. So he's basically stepping his, he's forcing the same position, but it's through his movement rather than just being stronger than me. So now, I've still got this trapped across here, but I can't kick it out anymore. My leg isn't stronger than his whole body weight. So, I'm going to keep control of the belt I had the whole time across here, and now I'm going to look to do one of two things. I, depending on how tight he is, the first thing I want to do is try and turn, basically, to my knees across here. This foot will come out, and my back, my butt will come up in the air, here, and I can start stripping this through here, because now there's this space created across here. If he's tight behind it, it's quite low. I've got to go through his body, there's no power from that. But if I come up a bit, here and here, I'm on my side. Not only do I have more strength here, there's less of his body weight pushing my knee down, but now there's more space for his leg, sorry, for his arm to pass through from that. Okay, that's one option. The second option is basically the same thing, but now it's a bit hard to move, so I'm going to pass my head all the way from here to the other side of his body here. So rather than trying to kick that come up and stay here, I'm basically going to keep coming under, under, under to here. Still the same elevation of the hips. And now it's, I'm now just in front of me rather than with his body. It's a bit easier to spring out from there. Okay. Once I bring it out, only thing to be aware of here is that I don't want, I need to keep my head tight on this arm here because if he's able to move his arm around and cross face me, then unless I've got a really good position or I'm bigger and stronger, I'm going to lose this eventually because I don't have the ability to create that height anymore. He'll just straighten his arm and I'll lose the whole position from there. So, one more time. Well, so we thread through it here, this comes there. If he does step over the arm to defend, which is again relatively common here and here, I try and come up. Head comes underneath a little bit, at least to here. If, I, if that's not enough, I can come all the way under the body from here. Come through from here. Now if I finish, if I come from here, you'll note that he doesn't roll the same way anymore. He'll now roll across his body, but it's the same thing in the end. So I start pushing across here, he'll roll with that. And I'll arrive on top here instead. Not much difference. Again, same finish, come up and go from there. Always a bunch of things, again, you can start to attack this arm. Tomorrow's on here, you can take, you can pass the leg through, go for a full crucifix, reverse triangle, thousands of options from there, but that's basically set up. So what it is, it's a way of, it can do two things. It's also possible by threatening that, that he, when he steps over into my guard, I can just leave that, you know, he can just, he, he, he accepts being in half guard rather than being in side control, and I've escaped just through the threat of the position, which is fine, but it's useful as a straight submission, as a reversal, and as a way of forcing a return back to guard, which is ultimately a good way of getting out of side control.